I am Mono's hair. A healthy hair and beauty blogger living in New York City. Hey y'all, I am going to dive into a topic that is very near and not at all dear to our hearts. Heat damage. I get tons and tons of questions um, about how to fix heat damage, what causes heat damage, if you have, if I have some, what can I do to get rid of it? I wanted to um, kind of come to Jesus on this with you all and try my best to break it down for you in terms that are easy to absorb and understand. As you all know, I have been attending um, school at Aveda Institute in the cosmetology program. And um, we talk a lot about the structure of hair, the science behind hair. So um, damage is definitely one of those topics that we talk about a lot. Let's start with what exactly is going on in your hair um, related to um, heat damage. So your hair, each strand of hair has a cortex, the inner part of the strand of hair, right? You have three kinds of bonds in the cortex that make up the cortex, okay? You have hydrogen bonds, you have salt bonds, and you have disulfide bonds. Hydrogen bonds are about a third of your hair's strength is what keeps it strong. These bonds have two types of breakage, temporary and permanent. When hydrogen bonds are temporarily broken, it occurs when your hair is wet. So when you're shampooing your hair, it allows your hair to stretch out and contract once it's dry again. So those types of um, bond breakages are normal, perfectly fine, it's supposed to happen. Permanent breakage of hydrogen bonds are the ones that occur when your bond is destroyed by excessive heat. Um, once those bonds are destroyed, your curls can be very easily, um, let's say stretched out of shape. For instance, it might not completely straighten the curl, but it, it can loosen it um, dramatically. Um, sometimes those will not mend. Your other physical bond, the salt bonds, those depend on your pH, okay? Um, so they're affected by acidic and alkaline substances, things that you put in your hair. Um, salt bonds will remain broken as long as your pH is not restored. Um, typically this can happen after chemical services. So that's why if you think about um, in every hair color video, I always say use a after color sealer after you install permanent color or anything where you're using developers, so even demi -permanent and it dies, you need to use an after color sealer. You know how I always say that? It restores your pH. Whenever you put um, permanent or um, any kind of chemical in your hair that alters it by color, by shape, so perms, relaxers, texturizers, all of those things um, have to be pH balanced with something that will neutralize it back down. So that's what after color sealers do to repair the salt bonds that are broken when your pH balance is upset. Sometimes your pH balance can be upset because of things that you're using in your hair. Um, certain types of raw ingredients can throw your pH balance off because your pH for your hair, you want your products between a four and a seven. I'm going to explain this in another video, so just keep, keep come with me right now. I'm going to get back to it in, in full detail. But um, as an example, um, a, a substance that I've seen talked a lot about online, baking soda. Um, people are washing their hair with baking soda. Baking soda has a natural pH around eight, maybe nine. Products for your hair are supposed to be between four and seven. So if you're washing your hair with baking soda, you're essentially tearing your hair up. So that means you're disrupting your salt bonds, which can in turn cause damage to your hair. The disulfide bond, those are um, the bonds that are broken by relaxers, permanent waving systems, and extreme heat. Meaning things like um, 450 degrees of titanium, not the heat from your blow dryer. I'm talking about direct, extreme, excessive heat. 
five and six passes of an extremely hot flat iron of titanium or some cheap ceramic that's not really ceramic, like things that are detrimental to the health of your hair. That's what I'm talking about when I say excessive heat. When you break disulfide bonds with that type of either chemical damage or excessive heat, those bonds are broken forever. They cannot be repaired. You have to cut that hair off. If you have lots of dryness, um, excessive frizz, your hair seems really dull and luster, like you're looking at your hair like, wow, it's really different, what's going on? You might have some type of pH imbalance or a salt bond breakage. So you wanna use a shampoo and a conditioner in a duo because together you're gonna get the cleansing and you're gonna get the conditioning that's gonna balance you back out to where you're supposed to be. If you have drooping curls, let's say you do a wash and go and you notice that the curls aren't as taut as they usually are, uh, maybe they are kind of wonky in spots, you got pieces that aren't as curly as others and they used to all be very uniform, that's probably um, a breakage in your hydrogen bonds and typically, if the damage is not excessive and hasn't been going on for a, an extreme amount of time, many months and months and months of it, you probably can um, help that with the elasticity treatments. Steaming those elasticity treatments is gonna help dramatically also. If you have super straight pieces, I mean bone straight, it ain't a curl in sight, it's just gone. You, you, you wash your hair, it's curl, 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 whoop, straight. That is a disulfide break in bonds. You cannot fix that. You are going to have to cut that hair off. You can grow it, manipulate different styles into your hair, but that curl pattern is not coming back because those bonds cannot be repaired. Um, I've had a lot of people ask about this, going to a stylist and you, you get your hair straight and you go home, you wear it for the week or whatever, and then you go on and wash your hair. You wanna make sure that you're using a clarifying shampoo first of all after straightening to make sure that all the buildup from the heat protecting products, hopefully they were used, come out of the hair. Then you wanna use a hydrating shampoo. Then you wanna go back in with your deep conditioner, steam it, see where you are. If you have super straight, bone straight pieces of hair everywhere. I'm sorry for you. And I know it hurts. Um, and I'm not, I'm, I'm being dead serious right now. Like that, that has to be one of the most disappointing things to ever go through because you went to a licensed professional and you expected that your hair would be cared for properly. Definitely don't go back to the person. Um, but I, I understand it is, it is the most annoying thing ever. And I truly sympathize with anybody that has had that happen to them. It's awful. Let's talk about some things that you can do or stop doing um, so that you don't have to deal with heat damage issues. Number one, always use heat protecting products when you're using direct heat. So let's define these. Direct heat are your tools like flat irons, curling irons, um, certain kinds of hot rollers, depending on the material it's made out of, your curling wands, things where you're taking a heated tool and putting it directly on your hair. Hooded dryers, blow dryers, those are not direct heat tools, that's just um, warm air. It's not directly being pressed down on the hair. Heat protecting products contain silicone. That's just what they are. Now, before y'all get started, hold on, hold on. Before y'all get started, down in my mentions, I know some of y'all got y'all keyboards ready. Direct from my Milady's cosmetology textbook, I'm gonna tell you the definition of silicones. Silicones are a group of oils chemically combined with silicon and oxygen to create a protective film. They can also be formulated to add shine to products. They do not contain texture altering properties and they are generally water soluble, meaning they'll wash out when they come in contact with a lot of water. So when you're shampooing or with um, clarifying shampoo. If you are of the brainwash that you don't wanna use silicones in your hair. Mm -mm, no. I'm a curly girl. I don't use silicones. I do the curly girl method. I don't use silicones. I don't do that. That ain't my thing. Don't expect to be able to apply direct heat to your hair safely. I'm sorry, but 
dims the rules. If you want to use your curling irons and your flat irons and those kinds of tools, you need heat protectants or you're likely going to tear up your hair. It's going to get dry. It's going to get brittle. You're going to lose your curl pattern. And then you're going to be in my mentions asking me what to do about it. Everything is a choice, but scientifically silicones don't cause damage. There's nothing in them that can permanently alter anything. It is a protective film. You've probably read things that say they block moisture. Well, yeah, because you want to block humidity in the air. If your hair is straight, you need that film. So when you walk outside, your hair doesn't poof up and look all crazy, right? If you don't want to use silicones, then don't straighten your hair with direct heat. I like to use products that have heat protecting properties from thermal damage all the way from shampoo through styling. My favorite line is Aveda's Smooth Infusion line. That's why when I straighten my hair, it's going to stay straight until I wash it out. It, it holds very well and then when I go to wash my hair out, curls pop right back in like nothing ever happened. So, you know, that's just my two cents on that. Next, ceramic tools. And I mean good ceramic, not that $15 maybe is ceramic, maybe it ain't. I get lots of questions about the difference between titanium and ceramic. Titanium is okay to use if you're careful with it and if your hair is strong enough to withstand that type of heat. Titanium gets significantly hotter than ceramic because it's a more porous metal in general. It allows more heat to pass through. So um, 400 degrees of titanium is gonna be wowy, wow, oh, wow hot. That's why I tell people to buy ceramic irons because you're, even if you turn it all the way up, you're still highly unlikely to burn your hair up with that because ceramic tools have more of a controlled heat to it. I personally just don't use titanium at all on myself or anyone else. I just don't want to risk it. Um, as far as what kind of ceramic irons to use, I personally use FHI um, flat irons, but there's lots of wonderful brands of flat irons out there. I would just say get online and do your research. You should definitely expect to spend more than $50 on it um, because if it's a $20 flat iron, it's probably not quality ceramic material on the plates. So it's probably gonna burn and rub off and uh, just probably tear your hair up, you know? Tip number three, don't continue to re-iron your hair in the days after. Um, try using rollers to, set, to um, preserve your style at night or if you can, wrap it around your head to keep the bend in it. Um, something I like to do is take sections of hair and band to knot it because it gives me this. Number four, do not use pure oils in the styling process, like coconut oil, extra virgin olive oil. Um, those pure oils that you love to style with are not allowed to be used with direct heat. What happens when you turn the stove on and you fill up a skillet with a bunch of coconut oil and then you put something in it? What does it do to it? It fries it, cooks it on up, doesn't it? That's what'll happen to your hair if you use coconut oil or olive oil or something like that to straighten your hair. I've had questions about it. Some of y'all might be sitting there laughing hysterically right now, but I've definitely been asked if coconut oil is a heat protectant. No, it is a cooking oil and it is not designed to be used with heated tools. So don't do it. Be accountable for the health of your hair. Um, whether you're doing the straightening yourself or whether you're going to a salon to have it done. If you're doing it yourself, invest in quality heat protecting products, invest in a quality iron, because if you end up with damage as a result of something you did, you're gonna be so pissed. And if it's with your stylist, ask questions. You're paying for the service. So you, it is okay if you share your concerns or if you're afraid that heat damage might be an issue. If your stylist acts like they don't care and they just kind of blow you off, get your behind out the chair and leave. I'm in training to become a stylist now and one of the number one things that our instructors tell us is it is your job to help people have better hair. So if you're sitting in the chair of someone who doesn't listen to your concerns and doesn't care about your damage, you might wanna look for another stylist. If you already have heat damage, like I said before, if you have those straight pieces and chunks where there's just absolutely no wave or no curl in sight, you're definitely going to want to cut that off. Um, you can keep it if you want to grow it out and, and, and try to work, do work around styles with rollers and twists and things like that. But inevitably, you're going to have to cut it off because it's not going to randomly one day curl back up. If your curls just seem looser than normal in some spots, maybe they're just drooping a little bit. 
you might be able to fix that with elasticity treatments, possibly protein treatments. You would do that as your conditioning treatment each week or whenever your wash day is. Steaming your hair is also going to dramatically help that too. My favorite elasticity treatment is the We Dye Curl Recovery Mask, like I said. It's pricey, but Lord Jesus, it works. I mean, you get what you pay for when it comes to treatments, truly. Um, there are some, some um, more uh, budget-friendly options out there. Apogee makes a textured treatment. It's the Curlific treatment. It's a less potent type of elasticity treatment. My friend Cherie that I transitioned on my channel, you guys probably remember at the end of her transition when I chopped off the rest of her relaxer, she had a wonky patch of hair in the front of her head that wouldn't quite you know, it wouldn't quite turn all the way over. The rest was like super spirally perfect. And then that one patch in the front was just like womp womp. I told her, okay, it's not bone straight. So this is probably fixable with elasticity treatment. So she started with the Apogee Curlific um, Texture Treatment. Uh, probably say two to three months later, I check in with her. Hmm. I, don't, I didn't see too much of an improvement honestly with my own eyes. So I switched her over to the We Dye treatment and after um, a few months with that one, the, the hair is significantly better. You can see more of the curl pattern coming in. She's been using it now I think for maybe six months or so and that hair looks dramatically better. Treatments take time. That's the thing you need to know. If you are using elasticity treatments, it's gonna take months of caring for your hair properly and using the treatment to see the results. Um, there are lots of different elasticity treatments out there. I'm gonna put um, in the about section below. If you have questions, you can leave them in the comments below. I will try to answer them. A lot of times, if I'm not answering your questions and you feel like, dang, I've asked this same question to her over and over again, it's probably because I can't give you an answer because I can't see you. It's either the way you're asking it or it requires me to see you or I need to go back and forth with you to answer. Sometimes your questions are a little too loaded for me to really understand what you're actually getting at. So I'm not ignoring you. I just can't, I can't get, I can't answer it. Um, for any of you that are dealing with heat damage now, I am truly sorry that it happened to you. And I know how frustrating it is when you feel like you're doing such a great job managing your hair and then something like that happens because it can seem like such a setback. But your hair will grow. I don't feel like you have to be like, I'm never using heat again. I'm like, I'm never gonna flat iron my hair again and flip out about it. You just need to be more careful. Do it right or leave it alone. So yeah, that's it. Bye.